In 1816, French physician and musician René Lenec watched two children scratching a long piece of wood with a pin. Later that year, this helped him overcome his deep shyness when helping a young lady, and made him famous. How? One more time. In 1816, French physician and musician René Lenec watched two children scratching a long piece of wood with a pin. Later that year, this helped him overcome his deep shyness when helping a young lady and made him famous. How? How, how was he helping this young lady? What was he doing? I mean, Do physician know? and musician, so there's a couple of options there. He could be giving her, like, music lessons. Also, physician and musician is, is a hell of an overlap there. Very true. I just like the way that sounds. It's got a nice ring to it. He overcame his intense shyness while helping a young lady because he watched two kids. Maybe he had to like perform like music or something. It's just weird phrasing that he was like helping somebody because you would think if you're a doctor, you would be treating somebody or if you're a musician, you would be playing for somebody or performing. Mm. It's like the word helping her. I'm like with her groceries and he was too shy to ask, but then was like, remember those kids with the pin. Pin on a long piece of wood. What's that going to sound like? I, please now enjoy the sound of the pen in my right hand and my left arm as I try and... Ooh. It's not a great sound. It's, it's like not... ASMR, but not. <laughs> so why, why do you think the kids would be doing that? They were trying to write their names in the log, probably, because that's what kids do. They want to, like, leave their mark on the world. Or they were trying to make an instrument or something, like, make music. Yeah, I, I had it more as an instrument, like they're scraping it down there to make a make yeah. a noise. Like, when I was a kid, I used to have something that looked like that, where you could, like, play. That's a good line of thought, but the noise wasn't necessarily what they were doing. They were sending signals to one another. Oh. They were like, they were like hey, there's a weird guy watching us. And the kid was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd be similarly concerned. Mm. Okay. They were using the sound as like a code almost. Like Morse code. Yeah. Remember, he helped a young lady, right? He didn't know her very well. Okay, so he watched, he watched these kids scratch a log and the kids were giving each other codes. And then he saw this young lady and he was like, hey, let me help you. And then was like, oh yeah, remember those kids. Now I'm not shy. I don't see the connection. Oh. <laughs> Was he like inspired? It's very, I mean, that is literally what has happened. Yeah, I wonder if he was like inspired by watching the kids interact. And it like gave him confidence to help this person. So if they're sending signals, you can do that by scratching into the wood. You can do that by leaving physical marks on it. Or you can try and use it as an amplifier or something like that to, to send noises. But if you were doing that, I don't know why you wouldn't just yell into it. Uh, for some reason, I assume this log was hollow. I don't know why I thought that. But if it's just oh. a solid piece of wood, then you're just scratching things into it. That feels like what kids do, though, right? They just, like, scratch things into things. I mean, I, I think mm. the, like, the part that I'm caught up on is, l like, overcoming his shyness seems like a part of it. Because in overcoming his shyness, he was able to live a fulfilling life. Mm. Uh, because before watching these kids and said log, he was, you know... I guess, a very shy musician physician, which uh -huh. did not get him very far. Yeah, I feel like both of his roles, you have to be kind of a little bit extroverted, like a musician to perform. And yeah. in, in being a doctor, you have to like be able to ask patients what's going on with them. Um, he didn't want to invade the lady's personal space more than he had to. I'm like stuck because the only way that I can hear the term helped a young lady, <gasps> it's like with her groceries. It's you know the it? guy who invented the stethoscope. Oh! That's exactly what it is. I thought Tom knew this. What? I really did not did. know this, That's but like, I, I just had this moment of, of like, sorry, sorry. It's like, I realize that vague flailing and enthusiasm does not come across well on, on audio. <laughs> but this is the problem with like having the YouTube the, channels that yeah. I watch because I'm like, I know someone's talked about this. Was it Tom? They're tapping on the log. If you tap on one part of it, and you put your ear to another part of it, you can, you hear can it. send noise through the log. They weren't tapping on the log. They were scratching on the log. So uh, Lenek saw two children sending signals to each other using a long piece of wood and scratching on it. And with an ear on one end, the child could hear the pin being scratched at the other end. 
And so later that year, he was diagnosing a young woman with symptoms of heart disease, and he didn't want to do the standard thing of pressing his ear against her chest. And so he thought back to those kids he saw scratching wow. messages on a log. I don't know. I, I I call shenanigans on that story. That seems unlikely, but <laughs> like truly, he was like, you know, young lady, I once saw these two kids playing on a log. BRB, I'm going to go create something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because of his musician background, he, you know, he was actually had skill making wooden flutes. So he designed a wooden tube for listening to the chest, which was the precursor to the modern stethoscope. 